Hey guys! Hi guys! So today we're gonna do a video. Introduce Maddie. You've probably seen her before on the video before about the partners of transgender people and issues that they face and well, that was basically oh, okay. Issues that you face as a partner of a, of a transgender person. You've probably seen her before on that. And she's with me today because yesterday I had my first appointment with gender care and that was with Dr. Seal. So Maddie came with me. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Um, only because I knew that I'd probably forget half the things that he was actually going to tell me. That's the only reason I was there with you. <laughs> I feel um, so special. Have, have some moral support. I went to see Dr. Seal after climbing up 30 flights of stairs. Madeline. Because it's on the 15th floor of Charing right. Cross Hospital. I'm scared of lifts. She doesn't yeah. like lifts. I told him, what, 30 times that it was fine for him to take the lift. I'll meet him at the top. No, he wanted to walk with me so he could whinge about it and bring it up for the next 24 hours. Thank you. But it's really annoying me. I gave you the option, you chose to come. I was scared she'd get lost. Oh, that's <laughs> okay, but after all that, I'm going to talk about the whole experience. Like, as an actual whole, like walking onto the, the, the ward. And, and um, the south and it's, north. It's really, it's really posh. You, as soon as you get to the 15th floor, you know it's yeah, not typical I, NHS. <laughs> I apologise for the washing machine, by the way, it's annoying me as well. Walking in, it was just the cleanest place on earth. It didn't even smell of hospital. That was the yeah. weird thing and about like, it. On the NHS, they find your appointment on a computer. They have, oh, I scroll so much. She could use a folder with it written down by hand. Yep. So we walked to the wrong end of it first, asked at that reception. Really like, moody, you need to be round, yeah, they, they were moody that end. That end they were a little bit moody. When you walk in, don't go up and round, just walk right. Yeah. Outpatients. You want outpatients. People right I didn't in the know first that. right door. So we then got to the right place and it was the smallest waiting area I've ever seen in a hospital. But there was only one person in it. One one person when we got and we there. When we got there, like one yeah. guy, yeah. And um, we went up to reception and I was like, I'm Alex. Here to see Dr. Silk at five o'clock, and she literally turned the page and ticked me off. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you a new patient? Yes, I am. Right, I'd like to fill this out. So, filled that. It was basically check, it was check my name, my address, and date of birth. I had to sign a contract to do with the payment, I think it was. So, I did that, and then it was like, okay, take a seat. The, the nurse will come and see you soon. So, at that point, we took a nice selfie. I might add that in here, right here. Okay, it's my favourite bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, why? <laughs> right, because I just made you walk. Well, I, I didn't make you. You just chose him to walk up 30 flights of stairs with me, and then I was like, you have to do your blood pressure. Yeah. And your face was still red. <laughs> and they weighed you as well. Yeah. But thanks to me, you're probably a good quarter pound lighter than you were when you started. So, yeah, I got, I got measured weight, height, blood pressure taken. Which is what the nurse does before you go and see Dr. Sill. All of all of the well, I didn't actually find out the blood pressure results, but the the, the height and weight Hi. results I didn't actually um know. Yeah. You didn't. Well, I found out that I'm a centimetre taller than I thought I was. Don't be good to you And I'm two stone heavier <laughs> than I thought I was. The insulting thing is that you thought me and you weighed the same for a good few months. And I'm like four inches shorter than you. So yeah, um, might as well put this out here. I'm 13 stone. <laughs> 13. Does this look like a 13 stone body? Like, okay, whatever. Maybe. Don't answer that. Um, but yeah, after uh, the nurse done all that, we went and sat <laughs> down again. And we waited a good, it's about 45 minutes. After that, we, got there, we got there really, really early, early. Even after walking up all those stairs. That killed time. I'm glad we did that, because otherwise we'd have been there even earlier. Yes, yeah, so we were sitting there for a good 45 minutes or so. And then we saw Dr. Sill come in. There were two people there that were ready to see him, yet they weren't actually patients, but yet he seems to be able to stop and talk to people for five minutes anyway. He was happy about it. He no, didn't seem, he happy didn't about seem very happy about it. But then, that happened, they got but, one in the left. Yeah, but then I thought that that would put him in a bad mood, and I was really worried that he'd be in a bad mood, because I didn't want him in a bad mood. Um, and then, yeah, he, he called me in, under the name of Ashley. You can call him Alex, in not Ashley. Really I, think, I think you've realised it's a mistake, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so we went into the office, sat down, and he asked why I was there, which was his very first question. And I basically explained that I wanted to go on hormones through gender care. My reasoning being that the NHS waiting times are just way too long, and I can just about afford to go private with hormones. 
So I figured that that was the best way of going about it, so I told him this. He went on to... what did he ask after that? When did you first realise that you were in the wrong body? Yeah, he, he explained what he was actually going to talk about and ask me about and how it would be different to when I see Dr. Laura. He's the medical side of things. He said, when did you first realise? Yeah, we, we basically went through my, my childhood. Your whole life story. Basically. Starting with the child, like, when did I realise? It was how how did I realise? What kind of people did I like playing with? Who was my best, like, what gender was my best friend? Yeah, in primary and secondary school. He then went on to ask about I that, um, what you like to what kind of games do you play at primary school? Oh yeah, he asked what sort of what what kind of games, and I was a little bit confused by that question because I didn't quite understand you what he meant me. by I games. Like, what did you say? And um, in the end, I just sort of said like I liked my sports like football, playing Xbox. kiss chase and wanting to kiss the girls. Yeah, playing kiss chase, wanting to kiss the girls. Um, there was something else. Oh, climbing trees. He, That's the yeah. example he gave. Yeah, and I said that was pretty much what I did though. And we went on about. Family next. It was family next. Wasn't siblings, it? yeah. Yeah, family. No, no, I'm saying you did yeah. siblings, then parents afterwards. Yeah. We did about siblings. Who are my siblings? Any gay siblings? We then went on to. Uh, is there any. He said, has there been any gender identity. He didn't say issues, but it was something like that within the family before. And I, I, I don't know of any. But yeah, he asked about gender and then he went on to ask about any homosexuality or anything like that. And then we moved on to, I think it was like illnesses within the family, which I don't really have any that he was worried about. Yet my mum sent me a list and I'm now worried for my life. But it's all just sort of normal yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was all age related. Really. Yeah. And then we went on to talk about operations that I've had. And I said the main one was me having my tonsils removed. The only other operations I've ever had were my grommets, but I didn't figure that was important. So, who knows? <laughs> Problem if it is now. We then went on to... <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> like, whether I wish that I... When I, when I hit puberty... What was the most? What did I hate the most? Was it the fact that my chest grew or Shark Week, basically? And I'd never actually thought about it, but thinking back, it was definitely the fact that my chest grew because... You can't, you can hide your periods. Yeah, but with my chest, it was just, it kept growing and growing and growing and it was driving me more and more insane. He was sort of basically asked, did I, did I wish that I was someone else? I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but it was basically, do you connect with your female part? He also asked, um... I think it was earlier. Do you, are there any parts of your life where you've got a female role? Yeah, that was he the asked beginning. that, and I, I don't, it was never. Yeah, no, I, I said never, but you don't it's really. it's really hard to answer it's that really because when you when you're younger and you don't know what it is, you are technically fulfilling a female role. Yeah, I think you meant since you've come out. Yeah, but and I've, do you ever? Do you want to live the full male role for the rest of your life? Yeah. Will you ever go back to any part? Is it is it a permanent gender decision? I think. Yeah. yeah um, I think that's how he phrased it. Yeah. Then we sort of went on to sex, which was a very interesting topic. <laughs> I'm a primary school teacher. <laughs> He asked basically if there were any problems when it came to having sex because of how you feel about your own body. Yeah, like the confidence and everything, anatomy wise, etc., etc. Mm. So yeah, we, we put our answers forward for that one. Which he asked if we had any problems during, or whether in the past, whatever. Um, and I hadn't really in the past, but with Maddie, we had we had a bit of an issue a little while ago about. Well, it's I'm with you since you came out. Yeah. It was sort of about the way that we actually had sex. What I will do is write about it on my Tumblr, only because I do have family watch this and I'm a little bit uneasy about talking no, about no, it. No, no, no. I just think it's something that. <laughs> no, no, it's, a it's lot probably of something. Probably it's probably something that a lot of people can relate to, which is why yeah. I said I'll write it on my Tumblr but and I'll whole, put the link below. On the whole, we're okay. Yeah. It was just one yeah, yeah. thing. It was just sort of one issue. Which I think is quite lucky. A lot of people I've heard about have a lot more. And like it was like a blip for a few weeks, and then now we're fine again. So yeah, you have to talk about it. Talking is the key. Yeah. <laughs> when we talked about it, it was fine again. <laughs> yeah. But going back to the actual childhood bit, he he asked what were my feelings when Mum tried to make me put on a dress, and I still remember to this day when Mum kept trying to make me put on summer dresses, and I just wasn't having it. Like, I absolutely hated. So I mean, they were pink, pink, pink. Do you like pink? Pink and checkered pink. Do you have pink school jumpers as well? No, no, no. They were, they were maroon. That's, that's what I'm saying. They weren't even maroon summer dress then. Why do you have pink summer dress? Oh, no. And a maroon <laughs> jumper. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Oh, well. 
weird school. Um, after asking about dress, he asked about what my relationship with my parents was like, which threw me off guard a little bit actually, because I've never actually really thought about what my relationship with my parents are like. That's I weird. mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, I explained to my mum, like we're literally best friends. Um, I talked to her a hell of a lot more than I used to. But yeah, she's my best friend. <laughs> and then he asked about my dad, and that was a bit more difficult. I feel like we used to be close, but he lives so far away now that we so rarely see him. It doesn't feel like there's much of a relationship there. So it was it was difficult trying to explain that to Dr. Seal, but he, he worded it as distant. We then went on to a history of drugs, alcohol abuse, all of that, which we know. Went on to medication, all of that. So I explained about my antidepressants in the past. Um, I, I'm currently on the Depo Provera. Pre pre I just yeah. call it the Depo. Which uh, he also said is not a problem to keep using whilst you're on tea as a form of contraception. After a few of the qu I can't remember all of the questions for the life of me, there were so many. Um, we went on to binding and the damage it can cause on your breasts because obviously it makes them lumpy. It makes them lumpy, so it's actually hard to tell whether it's a, a lump you need to worry about or if it's just lumpy breasts. So he asked me if I check mine regularly, and I do. Only because I've always checked mine regularly because I've got a quite a nasty looking, is it a mole? Oh. Yeah, um, on my left one. And I've always been told to really keep an eye on that. So I have, which is why I regularly check. So all of you guys out there, you must remember, that I no, no matter how much you hate having them, you need to remember that you need to check them because that's only going to cause more problems in the future if you don't check them and something something's yeah. there that you need to catch in time. because you need to know how they feel before you go yeah. on because tea changes them. He changes them quite a bit. You, you need to, uh, however much you don't want to, you need to have a feel of... Know what's normal for you. Yeah, whatever the normality is. And then we went more on to uh, partners and how what sexualities they've identified as. Um, no, question before was how many significant relationships have I had? Many. <laughs> I went with five. We then went on to talk about uh, the actual sexuality of my partners and I said that pretty much all or most of them identified as bisexual apart from Maddie who still identifies as lesbian which if you've read about, uh, watched the video that she did with Lucy on the Trans Life page about um, partners and stuff you get the whole topic and conversation about that and the explanation behind it and everything. And then he asked about my sexuality, which was basically males, females, or both. That, that was the option, so I just went with both. And then, have you lost a relationship because of being trans? And I class losing my last relationship as being trans. It was probably a mix of things, but I know that that was definitely one of the parts, because when I tried to come out to her, she just... everything started breaking down from that point, so yeah. We then went fully on to coming out. Who I came out to, how I came out to them, said that I tried to come out to my ex, that didn't work. I then came out to a good trans friend of mine and he was really happy for me and I thought, you know what, I'll come up to Maddie. So I came up to Maddie, just testing the waters as such and you were really supportive of it. She's still here. Well, not, not sure <laughs> yet, but yeah. So yeah, told Maddie, then I told my brother, he was all right. I told my mum and my nan, and then I told my dad, and I think everyone else was through Facebook. Instagram. And Instagram, easiest way of doing it asked about me at work, whether I work, what I do at work, whether people know at work, and I just said I'm stealth. Most of the people there don't actually know about me being transgender. I'm at work as Mr. Alexander Ashley, so there's no reason as to why they should think anything different. And then we got, on, we got onto quite a sad topic that I didn't actually realise my answer to until he'd asked the question, which was, do I have a wide circle of friends? And that was really hard for me because when I really thought about it, I realised that since coming out, I've actually lost a lot of people. A lot of people don't talk to me as much, they don't make as much effort with me, and if I see them, they try their hardest to avoid me. Like, if I saw them shopping or something like that, they're just... I don't exist, apparently. That was quite a difficult question to answer, and I wish I'd been a bit more prepared for that one. However, out of the way, we went on to talking about how I felt when I'm naked, which was... A really strange, I mean, I guess he has to ask it, but it, it sort of threw me off guard because I was like, I, 
I don't think anybody with a female body likes to look at themselves naked. I've never met a female that likes looking at themselves naked in the mirror. Georgina. So, <laughs> so a male in a female's body, it's going to be even less likely, surely, right? <laughs> but yeah, so we asked that. And then I think the last thing we actually talked about was testosterone. The effects that it has. And the pros and cons, is it? Yeah. The effects that testosterone has on your body, which everyone should sort of have a rough idea. It'll do the deepening of the voice. Um, the breasts, he said, they they, saggy. they lose... How did he put it? Maybe they, they become saggy because they the, the, the fat disperses elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. He, he <laughs> described them as empty sacks, which sound, but he said it would make it easier to find. <laughs> uh, more body hair growth. That all depends on genetics and all of that. So there is a high chance that I won't get a beard for quite a while. But he said it takes five years for the testosterone to have full effect over your body. Wasn't it? Yeah, for the, for the hair growth. For hair growth. Said, full hair growth. What else and then you've there? got thinning in your family, you can't expect to get hair, it's just, oh, yeah. if you don't get a beard, that's just your family yeah. history, you can't just think about it, I think. So, with my bald men in my family. You're, are you, you've got hair sitting here, No. No, I was not you then, someone else about it, didn't I? No. I, I wish I had one, but I don't have one. Really? Why? Um, because all men do. It's one of those things yeah, that sort then you of make the hairline look more masculine. Oh no, I've got a widow's peak, so I'm... <laughs> Obviously, the enlargement of the clitoris. I love the way he worded it. That was really things. awkward. It's one of those things you know, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. But he, he was there to say these things, but he's such, he's such a quiet guy. No, and he gave you a literal example of the, like, the length of his fingers. Oh, yeah. And like, he, was he like, knew. It was like, it would, grow, was like... it would grow between one and, half, one and a half to two inches. It was the way he went... Yeah, right in our faces. Yeah. It was like, I was like, yeah, I know I have some pictures. And he was like, you have some pictures of the good ones. How worrying can you be? So all of that. He also said that the... F <laughs> he was savage. He also said... My favourite part of the whole... <laughs> the whole thing. He also said that it um, redistrib redistributes the fat. the fat into different yeah. places. And if you've got and a big he, ass. Shh, he basically went, your ass. <laughs> Will become your stomach. And that's unhealthy for your heart. <laughs> he checked out my ass. I don't think checked out is the right. And decided it was too large and would cause problems when it's moved here. You have got a rather large Shh. ass. In my head. Are you laugh? I wasn't you came laughing out as much. <laughs> when you do go on tea, the fat, it just moves around your body. It doesn't actually get lost. It doesn't suddenly magically disappear. It moves to different parts of your body. So. On your that, is, that is a really important part for you to remember because a lot of people go on tea expecting them, expecting it to just make them thin and give them that perfect masculine body and that's not how it works. It will get moved around everywhere. So if you've got a big ass and thighs like I have, life will get interesting for me. <laughs> he said, do, do some cardiovascular activity. <laughs> he basically told me that I need to work out. Yeah, he did. Thank you, Dr. Seal. He asked about having children, whether I actually wanted to have them. And I said, I want to have children, but I don't want to carry them myself. Um, I've always known that. It's just one thing that I, I know I could not deal with. And then he asked about freezing eggs. And I said, but obviously because I've gone private, the, the cost of freezing my eggs just outweighs the whole chance of actually, of the success, basically. Yeah. Um, Cause it's sort of weighed up that if it was a free thing, you would do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, so... No, that's what I'm saying. Um, I mean, Dr. Sill was... He's a really, really lovely guy. hes He's got a really brilliant personality. But if you're slightly deaf, make sure you're sitting as close to him as possible. I could hardly hear him. Which meant when he was asking really <laughs> intimate one point he asked a question, questions... And you went, what? He had to repeat them. Several times in places. Um, there were a few things that I missed out. Honestly, I can't remember. There was so much. It was... And the, the but, order's a bit wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and get it. I'll try and get it into order as much as possible. I don't think the order matters too much as long as you get the basic content. So yeah, that's that's my first stage of gender care complete. Uh, I've got Dr. Lauren booked for the 11th of April, as that's when I had Dr. Sill booked, but I managed to get a cancellation appointment, which is why I had him yesterday. Literally a day under three weeks until Dr. Lorimer. Dr. Sill said that he's happy to give me the go-ahead for testosterone as long as Dr. Lorimer is. So, 
I had the biggest smile on my face, I swear. I, I was so happy to hear that. I will give you a nice big update when I see Dr. Lorimer. I don't think anything will go wrong. I will try my absolute hardest to maybe do another update in between, talk about something random as usual. So I will talk to you then. See, that's everything. Mm -hmm. Is that everything? Yeah. Alrighty then, I shall see you all later. See you later!